Hey fellow SweetScript developers, Eric from Stoic Software here again today. And in this video, we continue our series on how to transition from SweetScript 1.0 to SweetScript 2.0. Uh, in this edition, we're going to start looking at searches. Uh, searching in SweetScript is quite a lengthy, but a very important concept. So we'll be exploring searching over several videos. Um, now to coincide with this series of videos focused on searching, uh, I've also created a series of SweetScript cookbooks focused on searching. Um, these cookbooks are intended to give you some reference examples of the most common searching uh, techniques and concepts. So if you'd like your very own reference manual uh, for searching with SweetScript, then you will find a link for all the details on the cookbooks right at the top of the video description. All right, now let's get started. In SweetScript 1.0, there were two separate APIs for performing searches. The first was the NLAPI search record method. And this would create the search, execute the search, and return the results all in one function call. Uh, the second API broke the creation, execution, and results retrieval into separate method calls. Now in SweetScript 2.0, all of the searching capabilities are provided by the n slash search module. And this module mimics that of the latter API from 1.0. So in 2.0, there is no direct equivalent of NLAPI search record. In SweetScript 2.0, you will be creating or loading the search, executing the search, and retrieving the results, all with separate method calls. So to start with, we're going to investigate an example of loading and executing an existing saved search. We'll start with a very simple save search that shows all active employees hired in the current year. Uh, we actually won't look at the filters or the results uh, right now. We're just going to focus on loading and executing the search and the iteration methods for retrieving the results. In 1.0, we leverage NLAPI load search to obtain a reference to the save search. Then we call its run search method to execute the search on the server. Now that doesn't actually retrieve any results for us. We will get to that in just a minute. Uh, first, let's look at the 2.0 version of this same functionality, which is going to look uh, very similar. We begin by calling the search modules load method, then calling the run method on the search reference to execute it on the server. Now quickly notice also here that we're not declaring any specific script module with the define method. Uh, instead, we're using the require function so that you can basically paste this code uh, directly into your browser console or the NetSuite debugger uh, environment. Now from here in 1.0 there were two different ways we could retrieve our results for processing. The first was by using the for each result iteration method. The for each result method accepts a callback function, and that callback function returns a Boolean value true to continue iterating, false to stop. 2.0 offers a direct equivalent to the for each result iterator, and it's called the each iterator. Just as in 
The 2.0 each iterator will run through at most 4,000 results. And again, your callback must return a Boolean value, true to continue iterating, false to stop. If you're using each and you cannot figure out why your script is only processing one search result, please check that your callback method is returning the appropriate Boolean value. I have seen this question over and over, so don't say I didn't warn you. Now our other option in 1.0 was the getResults method that would retrieve a specified chunk of the result set. In get results, we specify the start and end index of the results that we want. And then we are free to iterate over the results array uh, however we choose to process those results. Once again, 2.0 offers a directly corresponding method, this time called get range. Again, in 2.0, we provide get range with the starting and ending index of the results we want to retrieve. The slice of results that we want can be from any part of the entire set of results, but it is limited to a maximum of 1,000 results per call to get range. Now, I've been fairly explicit with our method calls here, assigning each one to its own variable. Um, however, as with most 2.0 APIs, we can actually chain our search API calls to make our code just a bit more concise. So as you can see, we can actually chain our calls to load, run, and get range all together. Um, and we could, we could chain uh, each in just the same way. Now we have barely scratched the surface on searching in SweetScript 2.0, but uh, you don't want to sit here for two hours right now. Um, if you're looking to accelerate your mastery of searching with SweetScript, make sure you check out the cookbooks link listed right here and in the top of the video description. Uh, so that's it for this lesson. You've taken your first steps into searching with 2.0. Uh, if you liked what you saw in this video, hit that thumbs up button and go share what you learned with someone else. Hit subscribe to stay tuned to our series on transitioning from SweetScript 1.0 to 2.0. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep learning, keep sharing, and I will see you next time.